All right, good evening, everybody. Good evening, our Shadow Hills High School families. I am Mr. Fajardo, the school principal here at Shadow Hills High School. And with us this evening is a panel of guests. And these guests are gonna be providing us with information centered around our Knights Parent University digital dues for success at school. And uh, with us today, we have a few people that I'd like to go ahead and introduce. Uh, at the very top of our screen, we have Senorita Aubrey, one of our rural language teachers with us. Yay, welcome, Ms. Aubrey. We also have one of our students, the extraordinarily uh, awesome Ms. Perkins is joining us this evening as well. We also have from Desert Sands Unified School District, one of our technology gurus, Ms. Cindy Fur, who will be presenting this evening. In addition, we also have one of our other students with us this evening, the wonderful Ms. Rebecca Magania, who will be presenting with us tonight. Alongside me, helping me get through this here is one of our extraordinary assistant principals, one of them at least, right? Ms. Dr. Uh, Sharon Kalkowski with us this evening. And in addition, we do have our avid coordinator with us tonight, Ms. Tony Frazier, who will be, uh, be providing us with some information relating to all things avid and how uh, using some digital technology has an opportunity for us to do things at the very best that we can. So with that, this uh, evening, I'd like to introduce Ms. Cindy Fur with her presentation to go ahead and get us started this evening. Thank you. Oh, Ms. Fur, we got you on mute. It looks there like. we go. All, All right. right. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. All right. Good evening, everybody. I'm just going to um, go through some tips on uh, some technology tools and resources that we have available um, for our parents. And uh, I do work in the technology department as a uh, project facilitator and I work with all the high schools, so I work very closely with Shadow Hills. Um, so our first, I want to point out, and we have this on the banner at the bottom there, our uh, Growing Up Digital resource um, that has just a ton of information for parents, um, links to uh, lessons and things you can do at home, links to our uh, responsible use policy for the district, and just a lot of answers to your questions can be found at our Growing Up Digital website. So check that out. Um, I do want to mention that we use a service called Gaggle, and Gaggle monitors student email and um, Drive, anything in the Google Drive for um, all kinds of content, but they just flag anything that needs to be maybe looked at by an administrator or by a teacher. Um, so we do use a program called Gaggle, and they help keep your students safe. We love working with them. Um, another partnership we have is with our digital citizenship. We use our Common Sense Media um, they are a great resource for teachers, administrators, parents, students. They have a wonderful app that parents can use to check out movies and games and see if they're appropriate for their aged students. So if you want to go in and say, you know, my kid wants to watch this movie, is it appropriate for a 14-year-old? Is it appropriate for a 17-year-old? And it'll break it down for you and give you the points where there might be concern. Um, so it's a great way to just start conversations. Um, they also talk about apps, and I'll talk a little bit more about a few of them in a little while. Um, just a great resources at Common Sense Media, and they do have an app for parents. And that's uh, all resources provided through Common Sense. Is that right, Ms. Fur? What's that? I'm sorry? The uh, uh, resources that are provided through Common yes. Sense. Yes. So we have lessons. Right? We have lessons that our teachers use every year. Um, we have either you guys send out the parent tip sheet in newsletters. Um, and just lots of good things come from Common Sense Media throughout the whole district. Yes, absolutely. Sure. Um, speaking of apps, though, we have our app that most people are aware of now, the um, the Parent View app. And that just gives you all the information that you need um, as a parent to contact uh, how your students are doing in, in their classes. You can contact the teachers right through the Parent View app. You can answer surveys in the Parent View app. Um, not all of them, but a lot of them. <laughs> so there's a lot of information in Parent View. Um, and we they do have a web version and an app. You cannot do um, registration information on the app, but everything else you can do on your um, Parent View app. So I recommend that to everybody. Those are available in your Google Play or in your Apple App Store. Um, just type in Synergy Parent View and you'll find it. And speaking of uh, surveys, right, we have Miss Aubrey who will be talking in just a moment about the uh, EL parent survey. Absolutely. And so we do run a lot of our information 
you know, and the utilization of parent view. And I'm going to plug this in, Cindy, if I may, for our parents. Absolutely. Please do, yeah, please do use parent view, uh, parents. It's important because our teachers want to hear from you. And it's an easy way to pull up all their email addresses to your yep. child teachers to be able to communicate with them uh, for whatever reason that you feel uh, yep. you need to. So thank you. Absolutely. You can email right in the app, which makes it really easy. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, another thing that we recommend for some social media safety is is a program called Test Drive. And it's the link is being hidden on my slide right now. <laughs> but it, it it basically lets you let me go ahead and click on that. It allows you to kind of do some mock scenarios with your students. So they're navigating the digital world and, you know, maybe you're trying to limit some screen time or some access. This kind of gives some simulations, much like a driver's education course does but for digital world. So you can go through and do some scenarios and have those conversations with your students. It just opens up the door for communication, which I feel is the biggest thing you can do um, in regards to social media safety. Um, so just some tips. Well, these are these are right straight from, um, these are actually from Gaggle, um, where you wanna just, you know, it's not just the school, it's uh, everybody's responsible for protecting students' privacy and, helping to educate them. Um, and so this, these are just some tips to consider. I'm gonna talk a little bit more in depth about some of these things, but really helping kids know what information they should not be sharing on social media. Um, and then um, just really the communication, encouraging them to talk to you about anything that might be look a little bit suspicious online. So some top apps that kids are using um, and some cautions with them. Um, I do want to point out uh, as we talk about apps that there are um, age restrictions on some of them in their in their uh, use policies. They will say you must be a certain age to use apps, and they're all different. Um, most of them are 13 and up, and so um, as you're allowing your students to do, to use these, you want to be aware of those ages, and they're they're there for a reason. And that's in some of those cautions that I have noted, um, just to be aware of. It's not saying they're good or bad. It's just saying here's some areas to be aware of and to think about and to talk about with your children. Um, I have nephews uh, that are high school and now college age, and we just talk about these things all the time. And so they know to come to me if they're, you know, something looks odd on their account or um, somebody's contacting them or just whatever. And so we've kind of eased them into different um, apps as they get older. So a couple other ones that are newer. Um, and again, these are just what are popular with the students right now and some things to be aware of and to talk to them about um, as they are navigating this world. Because they are online more than they ever have been. So just awareness is good. And if I may on that also, Ms. Fur, we just sent out some information as well, parents, and you may have received it tonight on screen time. And the screen time that we typically do discuss is video game screen time, in addition to Absolutely. mobile phone use for social media. So it's an opportunity, once again, family, is just to kind of mm -hmm. you know, ensure that there are some you know, uh, safeguards that you put into place to ensure you know, that our children are, are, are protected. So thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, and again, as I've said a couple of times already, communication is the number one thing. Having those conversations, my nephews uh, were made crazy to mm -hmm. get in the car with me and we start talking about technology and how to be safe with it. Um, and they're just like, they roll their eyes, but now they're parroting it back to me. Um, and so they, they did hear me, which is- Repetition is key. Repetition yeah. is key. That's right. And so we just have the conversations all the time and it's great. Um, it also is something to make them talk to you about, which sometimes it's hard to get those words out of them. Um, <laughs> the other thing is to set those guidelines. So communicate, what are they using? Why are they using that particular app? Um, who are they communicating with? Setting some training wheels, you know, give them more restrictions when they're younger. As they as they show responsibility and appropriate use, you you allow greater and greater um, access. And then monitoring. Um, I have their passwords, even though they're my nephews, because I'm the one that monitors for them. Um, I have their passwords, and they know that I'm not trying to invade their privacy. I'm not trying to butt in. I'm just trying to keep them safe That's and right. they give it willingly and we talk about it all the time. And um, a lot of times, you know, we'll look at it together. And so it's, it's not seen as an invasion. It's seen as a, as I'm helping them as we, you know, 
they're not mature enough to handle all the things. And so they need adult guidance sometimes. Um, and so there's some other ways to help you as well. Um, your phone carrier might have um, a program. I love the Verizon's family base. Mm -hmm. um, AT&T has their own as well. And I'm sure any other provider also um, has something. There's also some apps that work across platforms um, like RPACT or Bark. And um, Bark especially has a newsletter you can sign up for whether you use their app or not. You can subscribe to their blog and they are, have some great tips. Um, that's actually where I learned about that loop one that I mentioned earlier was through the Bark mm -hmm. newsletter. And it's just a great resource for parents and really for anybody on what's happening in the in social media and what things to be aware of. Um, so that's a great one. And our pact is an app where you agree on times and time limits. And then you set those in the app on a student device, which is awesome. And you have the opportunity to actually increase that or decrease it or even disable it altogether. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, the phone carrier apps do that as well. Um, and then you can also, you can set up your kind of your own filtering system with devices like Disney Circle. There are others out there as well. Um, more and more hitting the market every day. But those will let you to kind of set up your own filtering system. So we have the district filtering on our district Chromebooks. Correct. But if a student's using their own laptop or your laptop or whatever, um, they don't fall under our filtering. So you would want to set up something at home that you can kind of make sure they're getting appropriate content. Perfect. All right. Um, I love to throw this out there. Just some, some tips on tabs that students should keep open on their Chromebooks or on their devices um, when they're in class as they're doing virtual learning. Um, their email, Google Classroom, and then their access through Student View, which is very similar to Parent View. In fact, the login page is the same on the computer. The apps are different, but the login page on, online is the same. Um, and then also we, we've been using Clever more and more at clever.com. And so those are some great tabs for students to keep um, open because that's where they'll get all of their information from their teachers, all their classwork. And so if they just have them available, then they won't miss anything. And I have to say, uh, Ms. Fur, our teachers have been doing a great job actually yes, they have. teaching kids explicitly how to go ahead and set up the dual screen on Chromebook, for example. So this way they yeah. can have those multiple tabs open to be able to navigate, you know, uh, painstakingly in some instances for some, but removing the pain altogether. So this way they can able, you know, they're able to navigate a little easier. Absolutely. Your teachers have done a fantastic job with yeah. that. So thank you. Absolutely. If right. I could just chime in here, certainly your nephews are so incredibly fortunate and blessed to have you um, <laughs> watching over them and, and supporting them, Ms. Fur and parents. That's really what this takes yep. is to kind of be the buddy and uh, to say, you know, share your passwords with me. I'm here to support you and I'm here to help you. And mm -hmm. I have to share too with everybody in Desert Sands that Ms. Fur is also here for our staff and for our school and for your students too. And we're incredibly grateful to her and to Desert Sands for providing the technology, which is preeminent in the Coachella Valley for all yes. of the students and everybody who is, you know, really challenged, but doing well. And it's amazing what I've seen with the growth with uh, distance yes. learning. So it's quite a team effort and it's very, it's very admirable. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Kalkowski. All well, right. Thank you, Ms. Fur. Any questions, uh, Dr. Key, for Ms. Fur before we let her go to maybe go and monitor other uh, her own uh, nephew's uh, you know, screen time right now? <laughs> I'll tell you, this is one of those things. This is on tape and anybody can play this again. And those were hot tips. We went fast, but all of this information, you can just replay it on Mr. Farhart's YouTube and watch this again because it's very, very yeah. excellent. And, and most of this information is on the Growing Up Digital website okay. that is scrolling. Um, just a lot of information is available there and we add to it frequently. So, so. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Thanks well, for being thank with you. us. Have yourself a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you. All so right. parents, you stay on here with us, parents, because we have um, three more features to go. And I'll let Mr. Fajardo introduce Ms. Lacey. All right. Well, with us uh, this evening, we also have uh, Senorita Lacey Aubrey with us, one of our world language teachers in the wonderful world of Spanish language. And she'll be uh, giving us a little bit more insight as to one of the parent surveys. And I'll let her go ahead and cue that up uh, for us uh, this uh, evening. Miss Aubrey, take it away. 
Oh, let's unmute you, Miss Aubrey. <laughs> Bienvenidos a mi, a mi clase también. Um, estoy aquí para informarlos a, de la encuesta de los padres de los aprendices de inglés. Entonces, si su alumno es parte de este grupo, si tiene que tomar el examen el PAC o si es parte de cualquier grupo que es, es parte de los aprendices de inglés, tienen que llenar esta encuesta. Nos ayudaría no solamente a la escuela, pero también es información muy importante para todo el distrito. Um, algunos de ustedes tal vez tienen más de un niño y es importante llenar el, el, la encuesta para cada alumno porque tal vez estén en uh, escuelas diferentes o también necesitamos um, tener uh, representación de cada alumno, de, de cada estudiante en la escuela. Entonces, van a recibir uh, un correo con esta encuesta y también hay una, otra encuesta de panorama que va a hablar la señora Kalkowski, que también pedimos que contesten las preguntas, que sean honestos lo, con lo que necesiten, porque realmente uh, la escuela y el distrito usa esa información para seguir um, con todo lo que vamos a hacer el resto del año. Entonces, queremos que cada persona, cada alumno tenga representación y tenga una voz. Y la voz es de parte de ustedes. Muchísimas gracias, señorita Aubrey. Uh, Dr. K, were you going to provide some insight for our families as well? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So Thank I'm going to just go ahead. Yep, yeah, I'm going to show you guys the panorama. So to dovetail, you can see that. There we go. So to dovetail on what Ms. Um, Aubrey sh shared, in addition to the EL survey, we want to hear your voice, parents. So there's the panorama survey. And you should have received last week via your email a link so that we can get your data, your specific data from your family or your voice rather, not data, but your voice mm -hmm. in sharing with us the things that you care about, the things that you want to see at our school, everything from um, safety to food and how you are perceiving our school is doing, how we can better meet your needs and providing that positive feedback as well in the Panorama Survey. So you would get your link and it will look something like this. We're going to go down to Shadow Hills High School. You'll have a direct link. When it comes to your email, you get a direct link. This is more of a generic, but approximately you go and you hit take this survey. And with a click of a button, it's asking questions. And the survey is an opportunity to help the school by sharing your opinions and how important they are, how much they matter to inform us as a team and as a district in how we can better support you and your students in their learning. The survey window opened on November 2nd and it goes through November 30th. Now families, this is specifically for you. There will be another survey opportunity for your students. And so we're gonna keep pushing out and you're gonna say, my goodness, didn't we just take a panorama survey? But you're gonna hear more information because the students will be asked to give their direct feedback. They themselves, and we're gonna ask the teachers to host this for them through their SEL learning time and to give them and provide them that time within the school day to provide their very valued feedback. We look at this, we analyze this, we go back to this over and over and we say in this area, we wanna grow a little bit. We're doing great in this area. The kids are loving when they um, go to the cafeteria and we have new food. They love things like that. In this area, we wanna grow. It's everything from sports, to you name it in the panorama survey. Mr. Fardo, anything else you wanna kind of share and chime in on that? Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you, first of all, for sharing that information. And, and folks, this is an opportunity to really elicit your voice. You know, uh, we, we do a lot of talking, <laughs> a lot of presenting, not only to our parents, but also to our students, to our faculty and staff. And so here's an opportunity for you to, uh, to really submit uh, your insight, your voice, if you will, uh, that will be sort of the barometer that we utilize is, is our district to really provide uh, more of an opportunity for us to best prepare all of our students, in our case, the high school level, you know, to be college, career, and community ready. So when you do get a chance, when you do find a few minutes of your time, you know, sit down with the family and kind of walk through the survey and provide us with that insight because that feedback is going to be very necessary as we continue our efforts in continuously improving our systems here in Desert Sands, and namely here with us at Shadow Hills High School. So thank you. You're uh, welcome.
Thank and, you, Mr. Ricardo. No, thank you, Dr. K. And speaking of systems and culture and leadership and instruction, uh, we have a couple of our students this evening that will be joining uh, one of our uh, one of our esteemed colleagues on campus, our AVID coordinator, Ms. Frazier. So I'm going to go ahead and bring all three onto the screen here. So, and I'll do another quick uh, introduction of these wonderful folks with us this evening. And uh, we have with us once again, Ms. Perkins, one of our students here in AVID. She'll be going through a couple of uh, different best case sort of uh, practices, if you will, for distance learning and organizational skills uh, that we utilize through our AVID school-wide Wicker model. In addition, Ms. Magania will uh, piggyback off of that and provide you with another best practice along the way. And so we uh, want to give them the benefit of this time to share not only with you, but also some personal experiences that have made their learning here at Shadow Hills High School that much more successful. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, launch it off here. We have Ms. Perkins and Ms. Magania joined uh, by uh, Ms. Fraser. Take it away. And you guys are on mute, just remember. <laughs> And I'm just the button clicker, kids, so you just go ahead and say next slide, and I just will click away for you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, so, yes, hello. My name is Karina Perkins. I am the senior AVID class president. And, Rebecca, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yeah, hi. My name is Rebecca Magania, and I am the senior AVID club treasurer. Yeah, so today we're here to talk to you about some AVID strategies that we have for your students during distance learning. So... So our recommendations for you guys, for your students, and also for you as parents is that um, in order to support your students, you can keep a routine. Um, you can support our, us as students, support our schooling, and then also support your students emotionally and through schooling. So both combined. So next slide. So as our first recommendation, keep a routine. Since changes in routine can be stressful, it'll be helpful to talk with us about why we are staying home and what our daily structure will be during this time. We like to use an agenda in the AVID program that we can see each day. In our agenda, we keep track of our assignments, test dates, meetings, and et cetera. So some examples of agendas that you can use are a spiral notebook and planner. Um, we also have an AVID planner, so some students may have one from maybe last year that they didn't use. Um, there's, those are usually provided by the school, though I don't think we were able to get those this year. Um, we also have eGendas or planner apps, so some apps that we recommend are the Pocket Schedule Planner, My Homework Student Planner, or like I like to use, I just use my regular notes app that has all my homeworks homework and meeting dates and everything in it. And then you can also use either a digital calendar or a physical calendar. As for suggestions for routines, this is a couple of examples of what routines your child can pick up on. You can wake up, get dressed and have breakfast at a normal time. Um, if you have more than one student at home, you can decide where everyone can do their work most effectively without any distractions. Within your agenda, you can list times for learning, exercise, and breaks and set alarms to run your students when to log in. You can schedule times for nutritionist lunches and snacks. Don't forget breaks. Breaks are really important when children are at school, especially between school and homework. I myself forget to take breaks sometimes, which is bad on me. <laughs> have dinner together as a family and discuss the day, enjoy more family times in the evening, playing, reading, watching a movie or exercising together, stick with a normal bedtime routine as much as possible during the week to make sure everyone gets enough sleep. And I know for a lot of students, right, that's probably one of the more challenging things to do because obviously the structure of being at school is a little different because you're at home. So you need to develop these plans and have these routines in place. And so thank you for sharing that. Very thank important. <laughs> yeah, so here we have some examples of our personal routines that we have for each school day. Mm -hmm. So um, for example, Rebecca's routine is like a bit more flexible. So not everything is specifically structured. And then whereas mine is a bit more structured and everything kind of happens the same way during each day. So Rebecca, if you would like to maybe go over yours quickly. Yeah, like my everyday routine is flexible, like Karina said, 7 a.m. through 12.20, I'm waking up, having breakfast, and getting dressed to attend Zoom classes. 12.20 to 6 p.m., I have lunch. 
since I am an avid tutor, I tutor students, I attend band practice, and I also do homework and I have a small break. 6 p.m. through 10 p.m. I have dinner and complete any homework assignments I have for all my classes and then I get ready for bed. And then my schedule, I wake up at 6.30 a.m. and I shower. I like to give myself a lot of time to like get ready, which is why I wake up so early. I don't like feeling rushed. Um, I eat breakfast at seven. Uh, from 7.30 to 8.30, I give myself some time to maybe catch up on assignments I didn't do the night before, or I'll just relax before class starts. And then I have school from 8.30 to 1.30, and I also have meetings usually. Um, 1.30 to two, I have lunch. From two to four is the time I give myself as a break. So I usually take a nap during that time. Um, from four to seven, I do homework. I usually have dinner around seven. And then from eight to 10, I have like what I like to call social time, which I think it's very important that students are still keeping in contact with their friends Absolutely. or peers. So um, I make sure that I'm like keeping in contact with my friends during that time. And then I'm in bed by 10 usually. Terrific. Girls, I, this is amazing. And I'll tell you, um, like the other slide where you talked about having breakfast and then a, a bedtime and you said by 10 mm -hmm. and kind of sticking to that. Have you found too, sometimes you have to adjust midstream? So what if a student, for example, or one of your friends kind of got off their schedule? What would you recommend them that they do? Um, so I know for a lot of students our age, it's most difficult to maintain a good sleeping schedule. There you go. Um, so mm -hmm. I would recommend, you know, maybe... If you're scheduled to get off, try to do the best you can to make sure that you get back on it as soon as possible. So, nice. um, yeah. yeah. So, that for me, is writing what I'm going to do either the night before or that morning. So, I know what I have to follow throughout the day. Oh, good idea. Good strategies. I'll tell you, I'm listening carefully to this because even adults right. get off schedule too, girls. Mm -hmm. Now, for supporting our schooling, school classroom guardian summaries. I'm sure there are um, presentations from back to school night where parents can go back and access. There are office hours. This is both beneficial for students and parents. Parents can schedule meetings with teachers to, if they're concerned about their child, or students can go in for tutoring or some sort of extra help. Um, parents can check attendance through parent view, reviewing assignments and grades in parent view and the parent, and there's gonna be some student discussion templates on the next slide. And there is also a parent view guidebook link on this slide as well. Okay, very important. And feel free at this point too, parents, give us a call. I spoke with a parent this afternoon. If you get that letter from CWA and you're concerned at all, or you have any questions about attendance and things, I can pull up right on my Synergy, any of our administrators, and we're here to help you and guide you through. We're only starting the beginning really of second quarter and it's first semester. So it's a great opportunity for all of us to get back on track. Thanks, kids. Absolutely. Yeah, so um, these are some examples on how you can talk to your student about their grades and their schooling. So for example, some positives that we have is maybe you notice that your student had perfect attendance for that day. So you could say something like, I noticed you were present for all your morning classes. So proud of you. Um, or say their grades are like really, really good for that quarter. So you could say, I noticed your grades are X, Y, Z. I'm overjoyed with the effort you're putting into school. Um, and then we also have some reflectives. So say that you notice that your student was marked absent or tardy for a class. You can approach them by saying, I noticed you were marked absent or tardy. Can you tell me what happened? Um, please be patient if the issue was connectivity issues or say your siblings. I know like I have issues a lot of the time that I just get dropped from a class sometimes <laughs> and that can be frustrating, but you know, we all have to work through the internet and the connectivity and what be it. Okay. Um, other examples are maybe you notice your student hasn't completed all their assignments. You could say something along the lines of, I received an email that said not completed all your assignments this week. Assignments are missing in X class. What happened? How we can how can we fix this? So you just want to try and be as understanding as possible. This is something that's new for all of us and we all have to get through this together. So nice. patience is key. Understanding is key. Good advice. And that's such an important comment because I know that Dr. K, she probably sees this a lot as, as a professor at a local uh, university here, you know, where even adult learners are having to deal with the same challenges that our teenagers are facing and right. middle schoolers for that matter, as well as uh, elementary. And so it's, it's obviously an opportunity for us to change 
uh, the way we sort of organize our life to some extent, and at the same time, uh, how we learn, right? And, and utilizing this and really accepting it for what it is and just moving forward in this case. And it's, it's awesome to hear both of you really talk to, uh, to our audience here about how you've been able to sort of adapt, right? So um, kudos to you guys for being able to share these personal experiences. Thank well, you. And that's it. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, we have all of our emails right there. Miss Frazier, Krana Perkins, and myself. If you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out at any time. Well, girls, thank you for, you gave us your emails to contact because you're the experts, of course. Right. And thank you so much. That was fantastic. And again, too, um, I want to go back to the slide. The operative word, the word that jumped out at me is to be patient to be patient during these times. And I feel so much more supported just hearing your reflections and what we need to do to go forward. Excellent, excellent advice. Well done, Ms. Yes. Fraser, the teacher who doesn't probably want to say anything, but it'd be okay if you said. Well, I am going to add in, girls, you were absolutely Please? amazing. Super proud yes, of you. Were. And parents, just do me a favor, really look at your students' grades and have those positive reinforcement conversations with them right now. As we're heading towards the end, the end of this semester, we want to make sure your students aren't going to be in summer school or retaking a class or falling behind on their future plans, whether it's going to be career, college, technical schools. We want to make sure that they're completely supportive and feeling confident. So please reach out to teachers. If you're not sure how to reach out to teachers or counseling, you have my email here. You're welcome to reach out to me and I can walk you through the steps. But we would love to do everything we can to help and make sure that your students stay on track with, with C's or higher in all their classes. Outstanding. Well, go Avid and thank you so much for your time. Gosh, Mr. Fajardo, this was short and sweet. And I'll tell you what, gives parents an opportunity to go get dinner. We thought maybe we'd take a full hour, but we did this in just less than 32 minutes, which is wonderful. And again, um, for those of you listening, if you didn't capture everything, you go to Mr. Fajardo's YouTube and we'll send out that link again. It's on my Twitter. He retweets me. Mm -hmm. He puts it up. You're going to hear from us and you can please share this too with your friends and families because there's some great information in here and we're very grateful to our partners for coming on and being panelists this evening. Mr. Fardo, final words. I just want to say awesome job to our students, obviously both uh, Karina as well as our uh, student here, Rebecca. You guys did a fabulous job and I really appreciate you guys really sharing your personal experiences because that resonates with other students who are probably thinking, you know what, gee, I had the same issue and I'm glad I'm not the only one. So these particular skill sets, uh, these organizational skill sets are so important, more now than ever before. And with that, we just wanted to once again, reinforce the idea of please stay connected, please stay engaged. And if you have any questions, parents, we are here to help and to serve. And from our school uh, to your homes, we wanna say thank you and always remember, at nights, ladies, do it. Right. right. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Just a little delay there, right? Well, thank you once again, everyone. Have a beautiful evening. Dr. K, thank you so much for setting You're this welcome. up. Ms. Fraser, thank you for your time. And ladies, once again, thank you. My regards to your families, and we shall see you tomorrow. Have Bye, everybody. Night, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Fajardo. Bye, kids. Bye, Bye Ms. Fraser.